Okay, on to tail setup, and uh, I really like this design, and the main reason is because because the bell crank's part of the boom, you can basically assemble this and get the the hardware side of this pretty much set up, except for the link that comes from here to your servo, and we'll do that uh, in the next segment. But uh, this is pretty cool. So um, basically what you're going to do is go ahead and get your rod guides on and get them spaced evenly uh, down the, the, the boom. Basically what you want, the manual doesn't say how far to space them, but what you want is no long area that's going to bow on you. So get them pretty much spaced evenly along there. Um, not difficult. Get them tightened down so you've got a straight shot of the rod from this bell crank all the way to this bell crank on the end, okay? You can sight down it, you can see if there's any bows, get that straight. All right, pretty straightforward. So, uh, now as you recall, I had you pull the boom out a little bit just to make sure that the torque tube ends weren't budding in the uh, bevel gears causing it to possibly bow. So your mileage is gonna vary on how much you adjust this link, but it's pretty straightforward. I had to screw my links in pretty far even on both ends to get it, but uh, as you'll see there, but uh, here's the idea. So what you're going to do is you're going to 90 this bell crank to the boom. All right, so get that 90, and then you're going to adjust this rod so that, uh, and let me talk about this tail a little bit, so that you have some pitch against torque in your blades. All right, and the manual kind of talks about that a little bit. Now one thing I will point out, and I just moved my bell crank, one thing I will point out, is let's take a little bit of look at the geometry. This arm, and it's maybe just the angle, I'm not sure on how this is bolted on, but I would say that is 90 for the arm. In other words, if you look at the gap along here, the tail case and the arm, and sight that, that would be a 90 arm. Well, one thing I noticed with this geometry is that arm being 90 is basically zero pitch. Bring the two blades together, as you can see, that arm looks 90. But they want you to have a little bit of pitch, and I'm using a Spartan gyro, and Spartan manual recommends a little bit of pitch. So what I found is, when I made this 90, let me get it 90 again, when I made this bell crank 90, you'll notice my arm, the gap is slightly back, okay? Not a big deal. And what this did, let's see if I can bring the blades up without changing it again, what this did is gave me about, let me set it up here again, I'm going to hold the rod, it gave me about that 8 degrees of pitch or 7 or whatever you're kind of looking for, uh, just a little bit against the torque of the main rotor to compensate. Now another thing it did is when the arm looks more 90 here, this angle 90 here, you'll notice the slider's not quite center, all right? But when you put this slightly back here and get that little bit of pitch in, as you see, now the slider pretty much looks center and throw. I really like this geometry. This is good geometry. Again, this arm not being 90, I think it's because the bolt pattern here is slightly at an angle, so it's an optical thing, and that, that, really, that this ball really is 90 in relation to this pivot. I'm not going to get out a protractor and measure it anything. It's close enough for me. So again, 90 on this bell crank. Then adjust your rod until this looks like this, and you're getting that little bit of pitch, and the slider looks about center. All right, as you can see, my slider pretty much looks center there. Okay, and, and that's basically it. You have now mechanically set up this tail. All right, so all you need to do now is bolt this into the heli, and we'll come back in the next segment and set up the, uh, the tail servo and the rod to that bell crank. Take a look at that. Again, I'm using a Spartan. I'm not totally going to go into Spartan setup from end to end um, because I've done a video on the Spartan a couple of times now. And uh, so go ahead, depending on your gyro, you're going to do that. But I will talk about setting up the end travel. You'll see this has a lot of swing in these blades. And uh, so I'm going to set up end travel for end to end. Uh, but basically my next segment will showing, be showing how to set up the linkage rod, uh, this carbon fiber covered one between the tail servo and that bell crank. So let's go ahead and get this bolted in the heli and we'll continue on. Okay, next up is the control rod that goes between the servo and the tail bell crank. Now, you'll notice that this fits here rather loose and I've seen these similar on many other helis that you'll get a rattle from this if you don't CA it. What the purpose of this is is to stiffen up this rod so it doesn't flex because there's no guides for this. So what you want to do is, and you don't want to get this in the threads of the control rod. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply some CA, all right, not a whole lot, just enough, all along the rod, all right, and then go ahead and run the tube on, 
all right and rotate it as you do it spread that CA around don't push it out here into the threads because you may need to adjust this and then center up the control rod between the threads and go ahead and let that cure and I may not got enough CA on there a little more down here on the end it's a rather loose fit so but you don't want it slobbering where you when you run this up here push it squeegees it down and gets it on that link in those, those threads so rotate rotate kind of spread it around center it up and let it cure all right so go ahead and do that then go ahead and get your link started on here and we're going to adjust these links when we get it uh, uh, get the tail servo set up and uh, try to get that uh, link adjusted anyway get that ready and we'll continue on okay real quick I want to talk about gyro placement I'm putting my gyro up here now again it's a Spartan depending on your gyro it may not actually fit up here alright but this is where I'm putting mine but an another important thing is because I'm mounting it above servos I use the metal plate alright isolation plate I have had experience where mounting a gyro on top of servos the electromagnetic uh, noise coming from the servos can affect the gyro and cause drift now another important thing the metal plate fit tightly between the frames but as you see there's a slot here or a cutout on both sides of the frame so you want to mount your gyro so that it floats so that the dampening works you want to make sure your gyro is not touching the sides of the frames all right and that you've got it centered in there so that the dampening the uh, foam can do its job and isolate vibration from the gyro on this I used a thin piece between the gyro and the metal plate and the thick piece between the metal plate and the top of the servo bracket all right but again we want that to float you need to get it back far enough so that the plate if you're using this is not jammed in in the frames here thus interfering with this all right so make sure you've got that all good and uh, so just a tip on gyro mounting um, if you're not going to mount your gyro there then your only choice is to use that gyro plate which I have not mounted yet and mount it up front here underneath um, because you don't want to mount it on an angled surface you want this level with the swash plate or, or 90 to the main shaft flat with the helicopter okay so just be aware of that anyway so I'm gonna get that hooked up and we'll continue on okay next up what we want to do is get the right arm on here and uh, get it 90 so depending on the gyro you're using see some of my other videos about you know turning the gain down putting it in right mode so the servo will center another thing you can do is just power it up in heading hold and it usually locks at 90 as long as you don't move the helicopter or the rudder stick okay so what we want to do is let me turn my radio on all right now I've already programmed the Spartan for my 9256 servo see my Spartan programming uh, so this is 720 uh, microsecond servo uh, millisecond servo make sure you program your servo on the Spartan for the proper servo before you hook the servo up just gonna uh, reiterate that so uh, again the next thing we want to do is find an arm that's 90 so I'm gonna turn on my receiver okay not move the helicopter wait till the gyro locks and there we go now the Spartan gyro says 13 to 17 millimeter ball spacing uh, the manual does not say now the 13 to 17 varies from helicopter to helicopter because it depends on how much you know the bell crank mixing and all that stuff may do for servo resolution so I'm just gonna dwell on this a little bit gyros tend to have an operating range where if you've got the ball too far out your servo is only gonna move a little bit so you don't get a whole lot of resolution if you've got it too far in the servo moves a lot you've got a ton of resolution but your speed is dropped down because the servo has to move so far so there's an optimum range again the Spartan the reason they say 13 to 17 is because I believe that's where their software optimal range is somewhere in that area so it just so happens on this helicopter it works out uh, the manual kinda of shows this star wheel okay and they show the ball all the way out on the end I measured that on on this servo that's about 15 millimeters so I'm kinda of right in the middle of that 13 to 17 however I don't like to put a ball all the way on the end of a horn uh, just for strength reasons so I'm gonna go to this four star and the second hole in happens to be the same distance as this farthest hole and the other thing that I did was I checked what you want is a hole so when this rod goes on it's kinda of straight down the frame that it's not going to come up and hit the main gear or come down and rub on the fan shroud so you want something in that range anyway so it looks like 15 millimeters gonna do it 
All right, so let me reset my gyro since I moved the heli around a little bit, and we'll see where 90 is. Wait till it initializes. All right, so what you want to do is you want this arm to be 90 with the heli, not 90 with the servo. The servo's at an angle, all right? So, and I'm moving the heli. That one didn't do it. Let me reset again. Moving the heli around a little bit here. Okay, so we'll just kind of put that on there. That's not quite right. Keep rotating your wheel until you find one that's 90. That's not quite right. Okay, that's not quite right. I'm going to find one here, and if you can't get it with this, okay, there we go. That is pretty 90 with the heli right there, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to go ahead and take one of the balls out with the nut and the screw and lock tight it and put it on that second hole. I'm going to put my screw back in my servo, and uh, I'm also going to trim off these other arms as they're not needed. We don't want them rubbing on anything. So trim off those other arms, get your ball on. Put it back in, and then if you're running a Metal Gear servo, put your screw back in at this point and lock tight it. Okay, it's a Metal Gear servo, lock tight it. So anyway, that's where we're going to set up next, and we'll continue on. Okay, so the next step, my servos are buzzing all over the place. The next step is, what we want to do now is adjust the links on this rod so that we get 90, 90, 90. So what you're going to do is, just like I said in the previous segment, set your bell crank to 90. Okay, just like we did, we set up the tail rotor boom assembly. All right, get that 90. Then what you want to do is I'm going to go ahead and repower up my receiver. Let that servo come back to 90. Again, depending on your gyro, you might want to just turn the gain down to zero or go into rate mode so uh, it stays 90. Okay, we're going to power up. Okay, try not to move the heli, and I just did. So power up again. What we want to do is we want to adjust this link so basically when the servo's at 90, it drops right on that ball. And as you can see, I've adjusted the, the links now, screwed them way in, so that when I put this link on here, my bell cranks at 90, just like I showed, and we drop this on, and that ensures us a 90-90 setup. All right, so as you can see, pretty straightforward setting up the mechanical side of the heli on this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and set my rudder direction, because with the Spartan, before you teach it, uh, the proper uh, correction direction, which is done with the rudder stick, uh, you need to make sure your rudder is moving the proper direction first. So I'm going to come back. Now on this heli, it's always going to be the same. If you built the tail rotor right, leading edge control, and it's on the correct side of the heli, you don't have to worry about a belt having an extra twist making it go the wrong way. It's impossible to happen. The servo will move one direction or the other for left or right. When I get that set up, I'll come back and tell you. We don't have to go look at the tail rotor and figure out which way the pitch goes. I'm just going to say which way the servo moves for left or right. And as long as you get that right, you'll be good to go. So let me get uh, continue on with the Spartan setup, and we'll come back and review that. Okay, so I just want to show you that uh, how on this radio, I had to reverse the rudder channel uh, to get this working correctly. So I'm basically just going to show you which way the servo moves for proper uh, flight characteristics. Okay, so most people steer the nose. That is, if I go right rudder, the nose goes right, the tail goes left. That's normal way anybody sets up. If you fly the tail, then you're going to have the opposite direction of this. But you'll know you're right on any gyro and any servo used on this is if I go right rudder, the servo should move back toward the heli. If I go left rudder, the servo should move forward toward the nose of the heli. So all you have to do is get that servo direction moving right, and you can't mess up. You don't have to be looking at the tail and everything. As long as you built it right, you didn't reverse anything. All right, so that's basically it. Uh, that's tail setup. I'm now going to go in and do my normal programming on the Spartan Gyro to set my end travel and correction direction. Follow my Spartan videos on setting up the Spartan. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and finish that, and that's going to complete tail setup.